Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of e-commerce mastery. I'm your host, Ben Gothard, and today we have the honor of speaking with Mike Bontempo. Now, today in this episode, Mike, the Facebook ads expert, the guru, the gentleman who is having his praises sung by people like Russell Brunson, Anik Singhal, Adam Nolan, just incredible, incredible people in the industry are saying, hey, when you're thinking about Facebook ads, Mike's the guy. So we really have a treat today. And what we're going to talk about is how to start making 50 sales a day with Facebook ads. Now, of course, you can make way more than this if you really, really hone in on these fundamentals, the three of which are going to be one, mapping out our funnel and understanding our cost per acquisition per customer and what we can spend getting our numbers right. Two, we're going to talk about getting powerful creatives, and we're going to talk a little bit about user-generated content. And then three, we're going to talk about treating this like a long-term business instead of a single product. So without any further ado, Mike, welcome to the show. Ben, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate, uh, appreciate jumping on with you. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for your time. So I want to dive right in and I want to hear what's your story? How'd you get here? Yeah, so I'm actually a big, uh, big autograph collector, big sports fan. And I used to send out um, autograph requests like 100 a week to baseball players, football players, you know, uh, basketball. And they used to send me back signed cards. And, you know, at times I would get two cards, three cards signed. And I launched a site called mikesautographs.com and I started to sell my duplicates. And, um, you know, I was making, I don't know, a hundred bucks a month. And I wanted to figure out how can I sell more of these autographs I was getting. So that kind of led me down the rabbit hole of the Warrior Forum, um, you know, Google and SEO and all of that. And, you know, I'm, I was 17 at the time. And uh, yeah, I started going, going down that rabbit hole just to figure out how to sell more autographs online. And then from there, I went to go play uh, baseball at, at a D3. And uh, I dropped out after my, my first semester because I was making a little bit of money online. And I, I knew this was the future. You know, this is 2010. Facebook ads are you know, rocking and rolling. I'm seeing all these guys, like guys my age, and they're making, they're literally making millions of dollars. And I'm like, that's, that's what I want to do. So I dropped out and my first six months really struggled. I ran through pretty much all my savings. Um, you know, I got, got into a little bit of credit card debt. I ended up actually going to a Russell Brunson seminar before he was really Russell Brunson. There was only like 40 people in attendance. We went down to Tampa and there was a kid, um, Shout out to him, Anthony Mink. Um, big, like, he, he, he probably doesn't even know how much he, he kind of changed my life and really got me going. But, like, we, we, we've talked and we're friends and everything, but I don't know if he really knows that. So if you're ever watching this, Anthony. Um, he did a presentation on fan pages and how he was getting penny likes in, on Facebook. And he kind of – he literally went over, like, the whole strategy. You know, a lot of people, they kind of – just gloss over it. He was like, no, I'm running this ad to this fan page. It's called Steelers fans. He's like, you could go try it. You know, you go back to your hotel room and try it and you'll start doing the same. So I tried it and I started getting penny likes. So he told me that he was promoting CPA offers from uh, Max Bounty on it. And he was getting paid $2 a lead. And, you know, next thing you know, I had like four or 5,000 fans um, and I started posting, you know, on, on my thing and I'm making a hundred bucks a day then 200 bucks a day. And next thing you know, I'm making like $500 a day profit. And then by the time I was 21, I made my first million dollars. Um, so yeah, man, like, you know, I got started Facebook ads in 2010, we really crushed it with fan pages. Then I really did CPA offers. Then I launched my own course. Um, that had had its ups and downs. And then I launched my agency in June of 2018. And we've had some record, record growth. I mean, we're a little bit over $400,000 a month. Um, you know, we, we're growing every day. Like I literally have a bunch of interviews lined up today for, for media buyers. We manage a little bit over $3 million a month across Facebook, Google, uh, display search, pretty much all of that. And, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty much my story. So. so you started crushing it 
on your own with these pages and CPA offers, what then, and, and then you jump from 500 a day to making your first million at 21. How did you make that jump? And then why did you transition to the agency model if you were crushing it on your own? Yeah. So, um, I had at a point in time, I had like a hundred fan pages, like 120 fan pages. We were, and, and literally we would just, I was running so many likes ads that we, at a point I had like three or 4 million fans. I literally had to hire, um, you know, outsourcers just to post on them because you're talking about, we were making four posts a day, four times 120. I mean, you're making, what is that? Uh, five, uh, 480 or something. So I'm not, not the greatest at math. Um, so it was like 480 posts a day. And, you know, from there, yeah, we were just doing so, so much volume. And then Facebook launched where you could actually go straight to the offer. Um, and they launched conversion tracking and that kind of changed the game. And we were, we were running more of that. And I was just doing, we had this one offer it was paying us like $6. Um, it was paying us $6 a lead and we were bringing in leads for like two bucks. And I was doing, you know, 5,000, 6,000 leads a day. Um, and just crushing it. So then I kind of, I kind of transitioned into, I had a course called the Facebook vault and I taught my method on how I built these fan pages and all this stuff. The problem was I did not know about chargebacks and I had, I had three very heavy trials in there. So I had a free trial, then two ninety seven a month, another free trial, then one ninety seven a month, then another free trial at 97 a month. And I actually had built up a recurring income stream of around $400,000 a month. And this was right, I was 21 as well. And, you know, CPAs, like I'm killing it. I'm making, you know, I literally netted, I don't know, I, I grossed like a million one at 21 and netted like 700 grand. So, you know, it's, you're literally going from a broke college kid to, you know, making insane money. And uh, I, I got my merchant account shut down because I was running too many trials. So I ended up, you know, kind of relaunching that. And I had some good years and some bad years. But really, um, the, the problem I found with teaching people, um, like teaching people that are too much of newbies, is they don't implement. And then they kind of, you know, complain. And, you know, so all of that. So I was like, you know what? And a lot of like, I was like, can I just do this for, for people, you know? Um, and I made a post on my Facebook fan, uh, my, my personal Facebook, and I went over a strategy on how I was retargeting people back to the book of call page who had already saw my offer. And I did it through Google tag manager. So essentially you could do a custom event, um, based upon, uh, milliseconds and you could drop a custom event. You could run the custom conversion and you could build a audience of people who had already seen your offer. So, you know, that did like, if they didn't go to your book call page, you weren't able to pixel them. This allowed you to pixel them. And I was able to cut my cost per book call in half. And I posted this on my um, page. I actually had a bunch of webinar people reach out to me and they're like, Hey man, like, can you do the same for me? Can you run my ads? Blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Sure. So I started, you know, charging $2,000 a month. I literally took my first client June 2nd, um, 2018. And yeah, man, it's, it's blown up from there. Like we've, we've been, we've become probably in my opinion, the top agency for high ticket webinar offers, um, you know, book offers like info publishing, like we absolutely, absolutely crush it. And, you know, we've grown extremely fast. We just moved into our new office a couple months ago and, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty much what, what happened, you know? That's amazing. So without any exaggeration, you are one of the top Facebook guys and, and at what you do on the planet. I mean, that is just incredible. And the fact that you've been in the game for so long and you've been operating from different perspectives, that's to me one of the most valuable sources of, of perspective is – the variety of of angles that you have and optics that you have into this whole internet marketing game. So that being said, let's hop into the main content here. Clearly, we know you're the expert. So let's hop into the main content. 
and let's talk about how to make those 50 at a minimum sales a day using Facebook ads, starting with number one. Yeah, so the first thing that you really have to do is you have to map out your funnel um, and figure out like what is the maximum allowable CPA out of the gate that I want to shoot for. I find a lot of business owners, they, they're just shooting in the dark. They have no idea about their numbers. You know, like we'll, we'll have people come to our agency and be like, oh, well, you know, I have this $7 widget and then we upsell them to like a $20 widget and they have no idea what their average order value is. They don't really have a win back sequence. They don't have emails. Like it, it's kind of like a one and done strategy. So what we do with everybody, any brands that we launch, anything uh, like internally or client, we map it out in Guru. And we figure out what is the maximum allowable CPA that I can get. So, and that's based upon how much the traffic's actually going to be, the conversion rate on the um, sales funnel, and the, the product prices and the upsells. Um, you know, from there, we're going to run three different scenarios. We're going to run a worst case scenario, an average scenario, and then a best case scenario. So we're going to figure out, okay, well, we're going to convert on our front end, let's say at 4%, our upsell one is going to convert at 10%. We're going to have a downsell. We're going to have a second upsell and then a third, um, a second downsell. And then you might have a thank you page with like an offer wall. And then you're going to compute that in Giru, G-E-R-U.com for anybody that, that wants to check it out. Um, it's a must have tool if you're running any type of paid media. Um, and, and you're going to figure out, okay, well, what is, what is my margin? Okay, you might have a 60% uh, margin. Your cost per acquisition is X. Here's your conversions. And it's, it's going to compute all of that. So then you could kind of come out and be like, okay, well, I'd be okay, I'd be okay with paying $15 for a new customer. Um, I know my margin is this. I know if I hit these numbers, I'm going to make $10 on every single customer. And that is really where you have to start. You have to have um, the economics worked out or you, have, you just have no shot to, to make it work. And I find so many people, they just, they really don't know their numbers. Like they're just kind of shooting in the wind and, you know, little tweaks will make the biggest difference between being able to run paid media at scale, you know, where you're spending like, you know, some days we're spending a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars a day on a brand. So, you know, it's, uh, you got to know your numbers in, in order to do that. So. so what about for the drop shipper, the e-commerce store owner who they're just really getting started, they're testing out different products. How do they, how do they, what do they do at this point? So at this point, let, let's say I was doing, I don't know, um, I'll give a prime example. So I, I actually did this as an internal test a little while ago, going back to my baseball card days. I sold a front end baseball card with, um, you know, I, I, I bought a bunch of them. It was, it was a rookie card of a, of a well-known person. And from there, you know, I was testing a bunch of different products, but I also was like, you know what, if they bought this and they already liked it, let me see if I could bundle them up and an upsell. So it was like, okay, buy one card. And then the first upsell, you know, get another three for, you know, 20% off, or you could even do buy two, get one free. And then I downsold the same exact thing for a little less of a price. So that would probably be the easiest way where you're going to sell front end, then you're going to sell more of the same. And then the downsell would be a little bit more of the same. And then you would find the second upsell, something that's, you know, complimentary, and then you could downsell to that as well. But more of the same really, really works. You know, if they already, if they already bought something and they like it, and the next thing you know, you could, you could sell more of the same, you know, it's, it's probably going to convert very well for you. And what about bringing in some sort of subscription product where it's like a supplement or a CBD product or skincare, and you can get people on recurring billing? How does that work with the upsells, downsells, so on and so forth? I mean, if it works for the niche, I really like it. I, I've found it to be a little bit tougher to get it to work. Um, it, it just, it has to work and your, your copy has to be very strong. I mean, you look at what Ryan Dice and Perry Belcher have been able to do, like, you know, American Guns Association, really 
what they're doing to get people into their membership site is they're giving away like a free knife, some premium type item in order to get somebody because they, they were sitting at around a 3% conversion rate when they were just trying to sell their newsletter at 1995 a month. They added the free knife, it went to like 21%. So if you're trying to sell a membership, um, you know, type model, you're definitely gonna have to add a premium in there. That makes sense. You're gonna have to know your numbers, your break even and and all that. So that that would probably be where I would start where, you know, you're going to add a premium item in there, you know, kind of bribe them to get them to take the actual membership site. That makes a lot of sense. So it seems like the core here is we have to understand our numbers. We need to understand how many people that are seeing our page or seeing our product, how many are buying, how much of it are they buying, how many of our upsells, downsells are they taking? and how much each customer is worth to us so that we know how much we can spend to acquire that customer and then make those numbers work for us. And that's really the first pillar here. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's the most important pillar. I mean, if you don't know your numbers, you're literally running in the dark and you're just never going to be able to get to the next level. So exactly. And if you're running in the dark, you might stub your toe or some other painful thing like that. So, okay, let's move on to the second one. And uh, yeah. Cool. So the, the second one really is, is creatives. You know, you're, especially for e-commerce, like you're going to win with great creative. So we do um, a lot of user generated content. So, you know, you're, you're going to have your customers, they might do an unboxing where they're going to get the product, they're going to pull it out and they're going to review it. Hey, you know, I, uh, you know, this feels like quality material or like we just did one with um, like healthy bars of soap and healthy um, like shampoo and everything. And they went over how, you know, the material was, um, how it felt in their hair, um, you know, how, how it was, it, it didn't feel like it was some cheap knockoff. Like it was like, hey, this is, this is really solid. We, we really liked it. Um, so stuff like that, where you can really demonstrate the actual product, you're just going to get a higher CTR and get a more pre-sold visitor to the, um, to the page. I mean, we've seen where if you have a good creative, you can cut your cost per acquisition in half. So, you know, if you're going to do e e-commerce, I would definitely go user generated content right out of the gate. And try to get a couple different looks, you know, um, different influencers, different customers, all that. And, you know, roll as much out as you can. Like for our, for our biggest um, clients, we're rolling out four to five different videos a week, like brand new ones. So, you know, and, and that makes a big difference, you know, when you're running at scale, you know, to be able to cut the CPA in half or even cut it by 20%, it's a, it's a very big deal. Absolutely. Especially if you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, every small percentage improvement leads to a massive amount of more revenue, more profit. Yeah, that's, a, that's amazing. So for the beginners in drop shipping and, and the beginners in custom labeling and, and private labeling and whatnot, they may not have the customer base yet. So are you suggesting reach out to influencers and maybe pay them to review the product to begin with or do something unscalable, like literally going and selling to somebody and then getting them to do, to give you generate content? I would, I would just shoot it myself. I would just shoot it myself, you know, do an unboxing and talk about the product. Hey, I just got this brand new product, blah, blah, you know, do a demonstration of the, of the product. You know, when you're cash strapped, you're going to have to do everything yourself. Like I, it's funny, like I, I mentor a lot of agency owners, like newer ones. And they're like, oh, well, should I outsource this work? And I'm like, dude, like, no. Like when you, when you don't have a lot of money, you need to be doing everything yourself. So not only obviously do you keep the, the money in your company, but you learn the process and you know exactly what to do. Because if you don't really understand and tough to actually duplicate yourself. So like, you know, let's, let's say, you know, you, you want to do a UGC and you're sending it out to an influencer or whatever, but you've never done one. You don't know what works. You're not going to be able to tell them what works. 
So it's, you want that hard data and then you're going to have the confidence as well to tell somebody like, Hey, listen, this is like, I tested this, you know, we got 3% of CTRs It knocked my cost per acquisition down by 10 bucks. Like this is how it's done. So I'm, I'm a very big fan of doing things yourself, figuring it out and then being able to, you know, teach other people how to do it as well. That makes a ton of sense. Okay. Okay, So so now we have our funnel. We know our numbers, we have our creatives, and in the beginning, we may have to do a lot of this unboxing and whatnot ourselves, but we have our content. Now, what is the third pillar? Yeah, so for for e-commerce, you have to be thinking long-term. So the the, the first thing is is you got to be building your email list. You got to have win-back campaigns, you know, sending people back to, you know, order other products, Um, you know, building a brand. And actually, you know, I see a lot of people, they're doing one and done type things. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to take this product off Alibaba and I'm going to promote it for a month. And if it works, great, I can, you know, make a couple bucks. And then it's like, no, I got to go find a whole nother product. You have to think long term, like, what else can I sell these people? You know, what, what are these customers worth over a 30, 60, 90, you know, 180 day lifespan and you know what what am my comfortable paying for them and and stop. They're, they're going on alibaba they're throwing it on a shopify site they're they're promoting it for a little bit and then and they're done well no why don't you take that product and you know get some new new influencers to do some creatives for it try some new upsells you know add that add that membership site um in, increase the conversions on it you know add add other products to your repertoire all under you know a brand name and that you have to think long term in e-commerce um one, one of my favorite sites is uh nerd marketing um i don't know if you've ever checked it out but i really like so he actually talks about he went in a karma loop and it, karma loop was um, they were about to go uh, banks of all of the long-term stuff he was doing, looking at the recency sequence, um, the frequency um, segments, um, doing his win back campaigns, really, really knowing the numbers of the business and, fo- and you have to build equity value in your actual brand and not be looking at it as you know, a cash cow. Oh, if I can make a quick, you know, 50 grand here, and then now I got to go rebuild everything. Like what I really like about my agency, even though it's extremely hard, it's a grind every single day, I'm building something that's an asset that I could sell in, you know, five, six years and get a big multiple for, you know, if you're doing five, $6 million in EBITDA a year, you have a, you could get a 10 to 12 multiple. And I'm thinking long term and I'm spending the money. Like, you know, I didn't have to go out and build a whole in house team. I didn't have to go out and spend all this money on an office, but I'm thinking long term. I know that, hey, this is going to pay off in the long run. So, you know, just get into that long term mode of thinking and, you know, get get out of the short term. Oh, I got to promote one product. And if, you know, if it phases out, let me promote another product. That's not, not, that's not how you do business. You know, that's very reminiscent of a Warren Buffett and his viewpoint on investing. There's a very famous quote that something to the effect of his whole strategy is buying great companies and holding them for very long periods of time and letting the work that he's putting in and the, the money compound and the interest compound over time and the momentum to build and, and everything to grow. And it seems like that's really at the root of, of what we're talking about here is taking a long-term view and not being in such a rush to just try a product and quit, but to really be focused and committed to making it work over the long term and trying the different things, trying the different products, trying the different membership ideas, different pieces of content, so on and so forth. There's almost no other way unless you want to just bet on winning the lottery, which is not a really good bet at all. Yep. And, you know, you, you got to off some, some marketplace, throw it up, 
up and start making sales and, and be profitable. I mean, a lot of them for, for, for a year, maybe two years. So like the hustle, man, if you're treating it as a hustle, you're going to struggle. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I do want to thank you so very, very much, Mike, for, uh, for, for coming on the show today and for sharing everything that you have. Um, I really think that these three pillars that we've been talking about are so critical to the success of pretty much any business. And it can be like, these are principles that can then be applied to any business. And uh, we were talking about it in the, in, within the scope of e-commerce, but it really is valuable no matter where you bring it. So I do want to thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, and I know that you have a special gift for the people. Um, so I'd love uh, if you might be able to tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. So we have a, um, an audiobook that we sell. It's an hour and a half. It goes over pretty much all of my um, ad strategies for, for Facebook. It's just $1.99. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, we've sold, I think we've sold now like 17,000 copies and, um, you know, got, got a ton of great reviews. It's literally how we spend, you know, up, up to a hundred thousand dollars a day alone on, on Facebook and like the strategies, how we do our creatives, how we do the videos, how we do the optimization, how we will lay out our campaigns. I talk about Giru in there. Like it's, it's probably the best dollar 99 you're going to spend uh, all week. So, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And for everybody who is watching and listening, the link to that audio book is going to be either in the description below or in the show notes. And oh, y'all, when it comes to so, it sorry. Comes, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I start. Sorry, I didn't even I didn't even drop the link. That was a terrible plug. Sorry about that. Yeah. So it was l. It's lp. Dot dot com. If you want to go check out the the audiobook, I'm I'm a terrible salesman. I didn't even give them a link to to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Well, I'm gonna again put those in the description and the show notes. Make sure uh, everybody has access to that. And if you're if you're thinking to yourself, a dollar ninety nine, I'm not sure if I want to spend that on getting to learn from somebody who's made millions of dollars in their twenties, then I would really challenge you to, to rethink that because for literally $2, $1.99, you will get a peek, a sneak peek into how to do this. Mike has done it. He's been doing it for years. One concept that you take from that audiobook and implement into your business could be worth millions to you. So you invest $1.99. You get millions. That's a pretty damn good investment for me. I would challenge you to find a better ROI anywhere else. So again, go go grab the audiobook either in the description below or in the show notes. And Mike, I want to thank you again so, so much. It's really been a pleasure. And to everybody who's watching and listening, I want to thank y'all and I will see everybody on the next episode. Take care now.